Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone live here at the OpenStack Summit in Vancouver, British Columbia. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman from wikibon.com. Excited to, for this next guest, Jesse Proudman, founder and CTO of Blue Box. Welcome to theCUBE. My pleasure. Because as you know on theCUBE, we have CUBE Madness every year in our second year, and uh, Jesse is the winner of this year's CUBE Madness competition. Congratulations, and you have a special presentation yes. for us on theCUBE today. I have created the annual CUBE Madness trophy, delivering it to theCUBE to present year after year. So we're honoring Jason Stowe, the 2014 winner, and myself for 2015. Congratulations. Okay, we are on the Cube. This is the new official Cube Madness Trophy. Every year we have the NCAA tournament bracket promotion, fun, opportunity that we stack the guests up against each other in a bracket formation where they go head to head on social mojo and the winner emerges like the final four in the final championship by votes. And um, the votes in and of itself is fun <laughs> every year, but now we have official trophy. Stu, take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, 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 so Jesse, I have to ask, you know, you've been on theCUBE a couple of times, what does it mean to you to be the CUBE Madness <laughs> champion and, and get us, you know, part of your reward was of course, you know, getting a segment here at the OpenStack Summit, it's like a homecoming for you. Yeah, you know, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's just a fun process all around. I think you take 64 incredible technologists from across our industry, uh, you get them together, you get to see their, the social campaigns that everybody was able to, to assemble. It was really, it was an entertaining process. Uh, it was delightful to see the, the Red Hat campaign, I think, uh, outside of, of ours, I, I was most impressed with what they were able to pull together with Jim Whitehurst, and uh, we just had, we had an amazing time at the you, office. You, you took down the CEO of Red Hat. Yes, well, you know, it's what, what happens. the corporate campaign behind it. You know, I think Blue Box will take down Red Hat. Well, you got HDS, uh, <laughs> ST was big into it as well. Those guys were fighting to the end. This year, maybe we'll look at the voting, we'll have special algorithms, and like actually build in some gamification. Ah, yeah. Based upon each division, the hack gets harder and harder and harder. We'll put the security provisions in place. That will be an open source project. We should go get some <laughs> volunteers to put that together, but that would be super interesting. Every year, be. make each round harder more and difficult. harder. Yeah, make it more got difficult. Like that this year. Like yeah. it, was, it was fascinating. Yeah. So, we're so psyched to have you. But let's talk about what you guys are doing. Um, all fun aside, it's great to have the trophy. Thanks so much. <laughs> I loved your uh, posters as well. Having some fun with it. This industry is all about having fun. People work hard, play hard. Give us the update. What's going on with you guys? You had a nice uh, uh, golf cart out here, blue box car. You got some stuff going on here. Give us the, uh, what's going on in your world. Yeah, I think there's too many, too many folks in this industry that don't have fun with their products, so we're, we're happy to uh, take up all their fun. Uh, we are announcing a bunch of new stuff here at OpenStack Summit in Vancouver. The, the primary item for us is our on-prem enterprise product. So we started, if you remember back in, in Tokyo, or in Hong Kong in uh, 2013 with Blue Box Cloud, our hosted edition. So this is a hosted private cloud, runs on hardware in our data center, operated by Blue Box. Uh, that was our, our entry into the market. And on Monday, we announced our on-premises offering. So this is a remotely managed on-premises private cloud powered by OpenStack. We handle all the pain that is associated with OpenStack and really let the customers benefit from working with OpenStack. Uh, on top of that, we enter, uh, announced an enterprise edition. So this is a, a Dell-powered bomb. It's twice the compute, twice the RAM, twice the disk profile uh, of, on the offering. And uh, we're seeing a lot of uptake in, in customers that have high, high compute, high performance workloads uh, on that. So two exciting product announcements for us this week on top of being able to bring our A-Team van, our A-Team theme, you can see from the shirt. Uh, we got bling at our booth, we've got uh, <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff. This is the best theme we've had at any summit. So it's been a great week so far. He's doing some biz dev deals, I saw you having a nice lunch meeting. You're in meetings all day long. What are the top conversations that you're involved in this week? Share with the folks out there that may want to join the conversation or participate or just know what you're talking about. What are the top kinds of conversations you're having with yeah. partners, employees, customers in the industry, everybody? So we're actively recruiting. I think that's been a big portion of this week. Uh, there's, there's a lot of folks. It's been pretty exciting. I think you, you, start, you start a company, you get a couple years in, 
and you, you see the trajectory of like, for a long time it's outbound recruiting. We're now getting to the point where it's inbound recruiting. So people are excited about the way we're delivering OpenStack and they want to come work here with, with some of the amazing engineers we have. So a lot of conversations around that this week. A lot of conversations around our, our channel edition. So we have our hosted product today. We have the on-premises product. And we also have, which is not, not widely publicized here because of the, the target market, but we have a channel product uh, that is targeted towards other data center companies. So somebody that has a data center, has physical infrastructure, and is looking to sell hosted private cloud. Uh, and so we're, we're getting into a lot of conversations with, with those organizations who have come to the summit uh, looking for a solution to be able to bring to their customers. So that, that's been a lot of our interaction. Uh, and then other partnerships around hardware suppliers uh, and, and the like. Yeah, so, so Jesse, when I got to walk around the show floor, one of the things I love to see is it's the We're Hiring sticker. Yeah. Up all over the place. Uh, you know, definitely the, it's hot technology here. Um, you know, how is the job market out there for those people looking, you know, and from, from your standpoint, are there enough of the people with the right skill sets to help, you know, move you and the rest of the community forward? Oh, not at all. I mean, I think yeah. that's, uh, there's, there's not, not nearly enough uh, engineers in the world that have capabilities and the experience that, that any of our, uh, the organizations involved in this project need. And I think, uh, to some extent, that's what makes our business so great and the way we're delivering OpenStack to our customers. Uh, to another extent, that makes it very frustrating. Um, so you look at, at how, you look at the competitive landscape. So many organizations are focused on delivering OpenStack as a software distribution. If I'm a customer and I buy a software distribution, that means I actually need to have somebody in my company that understands OpenStack and knows how to run it, knows how to take that distribution and make it work. And those people are rare, expensive, and hard to retain. The way we sell OpenStack is as a service, so we're handling all of that for customers, which really means that's our specialty, our focus, our expertise. Um, and that's, I think, the, the shortfall in talent really drives the value in, in the way we've chosen to distribute OpenStack. Uh, you then look at the, the, the educational opportunity over the next couple of years. It's going to take some time to get more and more folks trained on this technology and up to speed. And I think over time we'll start to see that become less and less of an issue. But man, right now it's certainly a tight pinch. Yeah, I, I actually you bring up a real good point. Something we've been poking at from the Wikibon standpoint, not just for OpenStack, but in the industry in general. We need to change to really the marginal economics of software. Right. If it requires services to be able to deploy this and it's not something that's repeatable, um, you know, it, we, we can't really scale and grow and to drive that new innovation. So it's when we can bake more of it into software, it's something that's much more easily consumable. Um, and cloud in general should get to that model uh, and OpenStack needs to get there. Yeah, and so I think, I mean, you look at any other type of software, it's, uh, Salesforce is a great example. You don't download Salesforce as a piece of on-premises software and install it and have a Salesforce expert that runs it. You consume it as a service. There's no reason OpenStack can't be delivered, consumed, and operated that way, whether it be in a hosted model like our original product line, or now ultimately on premises like we've announced on Monday. Uh, and we think that's the winning combination for this type of technology. It's not right for everybody, but for 80, 90% 80, of the marketplace, that is the way to consume OpenStack. So talk about the funding. You guys, um, you know, obviously started self-funded, started the company. Talk about the funding, who's now invested. Talk about the ca working capital you have and some of the growth, growing pains and opportunities you are experience, obviously you're hiring, which is great. Yeah. Inbound means there's people want to work for you. So, yeah, what's the status? I mean, you got some fresh financing. Yep. When was the last round? Give yeah, us the numbers. Yeah, so, I mean, the company will be 12 years old here in August, which is an eternity in this space. A, a literal eternity. Uh, and so we grew up for the first nine years as a bootstrap company. I, I funded it from my dorm room to, uh, to raising the Series A. And we really are a managed hosting company competing with Rackspace. Raised a $4.3 million Series A in December of 12, and then we raised $14 million in uh, December, January of, of or December of 14, January 15. Uh, and so for us, that gives us uh, quite a bit of runway into the, the next sort of 18 months. Uh, and, and it's really, it was a, a validation of the business model, right? I think you, you look at, um, like Matt Weinberger talks about how the, the venture community has really began to ignore or, or uh, uh, be ashamed of the OpenStack investment, and that's not at all the case for us. I think we, we found a very profitable niche, a niche that is growing, uh, one that, that we can really deliver a premium service, and we were able to raise capital on that, and, and that capital is uh, giving us the opportunity to be incredibly successful. But you guys were months. already profitable prior to funding. No, no, we're, I mean, we're investing heavily in yeah. OpenStack, so yeah. we're, we're burning cash just like every other startup, but we're doing that intentionally. Um, and the nice thing is, because we've had a business line prior to, open, to our OpenStack product, we have cash flow that, that sustains our operations. 
Yeah, so you had cash. It wasn't like you're running out of cash, but you're burning to grow. To grow. That's We're burning to invest in a future product that we think will be wildly successful. But you have a business model that you're executing on. Yep. You're just burning for extra growth. Classic exactly. case of working capital. Yep. Talk about the growth model I and mean, the business model. Talk about how, how that's going. Certification, certainly we're hearing a lot of that. Is that something that you guys will do differently in context with the community or both, will you add on your own? Um, people want to know if it's going to work. Yeah, sort of the interoperability work that was announced this week. Yeah, is that, yeah, yeah. so uh, we were early in on the interoperability story with OpenStack, big believers in, in that requirement. I mean, you, you think about the, the vision and the story that, that is OpenStack, and it really originated around this ability to move workloads from cloud to cloud. And for a long time, that didn't exist. When you deployed on Rackspace, and you deployed on Mirantis, and you deployed on Bluebox, they were all largely different OpenStack versions, different OpenStack APIs, and you couldn't expect that call to be consistent. With the interoperability of the work that was released uh, at this summit, you're starting to see certification, actual tests that are ran against each one of the inst installations that say, hey, this API call that I make will work the same way on each installation, and that's that's been so desperately needed. Uh, you know, I think, uh, it's taken a number of years to get us there, but I'm so thankful that we're finally there and, and we'll continue to actively be involved in that process and in that, in that community and in, in that uh, technology testing stack because um, I, I think it really is a key. It's a key component of what we're trying to do here. Yeah, so, so Jesse, is that interoperability mature, how does a company like yours differentiate? You know, if, if many things work kind of the same, you know, and you've got a lot of big companies coming into the space, uh, you, you would think some of them would uh, d deploy OpenStack as a service. H how do you continue to push the envelope, and innovate, and uh, separate yourself from the pack? Yeah, but they're not. I mean, I think that's the funny thing. You look at all the big companies entering the space, and they're trying to treat this just like Red Hat treated Linux uh, as a distribution. Everybody's trying to ship this as a disparate piece of software, mm. Uh, and that's not how OpenStack can or should be consumed. I think that the challenge is when you're, when a single Red Hat guest or, or physical piece of hardware goes down, that takes down a small portion of your infrastructure. When your entire cloud goes down, you don't just want to pick up the phone and call support, like you've got way bigger problems because your entire business is offline. And so really what companies that are consuming OpenStack need is an organization that is focused on the operational reliability and the service aspect of that, of that product. They want the, the, to know that they're consuming a private cloud with the same level of reliability and consistency that they can get out of a public cloud, and you're not going to get that out of software. So on the, on the engineering build out, one of the things Stu and I were talking about is that we're in a revolutionary utopian idea of like this huge amount of energy going into build out. I mean, engineering across the board, software, UX, uh, everything, ops, huge growth. I mean, people sitting in the sessions on the floor, so huge onboarding of new blood. What's your take and how are you handling that? What would you say to folks out there that are coming into the community with full gear, ready to build out stuff? I mean, you're seeing this transformation happening and we're now going to a matured path and people are building. I mean, yeah. it's like construction time. It's like people are rolling out cloud in a big way. Yeah, the, so it's, it, the breadth of services is I think the biggest challenge, right? You, you look at what OpenStack has become, you've got 20 plus different services that all do different things. They all provide different capabilities to the end user. They're all installed differently. They're all configured differently. They all have different parameters. And that really is challenging. Like how do you take a brand new person to this space and, and get them familiar with the 20 different code names that exist on all these projects, let alone what the, code, what the projects do, let alone the minutia about how do you install and operate those. And so I think a lot of the work that Foundation is doing around actually defining that core set of services, like what is, what is the raw pieces that make up OpenStack at its, uh, at its core, that's critical. And then we've got to figure out, again, I think it goes back to training. How do we get more and more people in this industry up to speed with everything that's going on and, and the pace of change that's going on? Uh, because it's moving so fast. Do you think that the industry will move quickly where vendors will go and adopt their own certification on top of existing DEF core stuff, or do you see it all kind of coming together under the foundation? What's your take on that? Yeah, I, I think it will continue to come through under the foundation, I think, it, and it needs to come through under the foundation. I think the moment we start to get individual vendors saying this is sort of my certified offering and it differs from uh, it differs from that core. We're starting to get the forks and the splintering, and nobody in the community wants that. I think that that interoperability story, that ability to say, look, 
everything, it's, it's sort of this worldwide global cloud. I mean, you look at the keynotes this morning, that was the message that was, was pounded in repeatedly yesterday, uh, continue to be pounded in today. Like that is, a, it's a critical component for all of our success. All right, so, so Jesse, you know, the maturity message is getting better. What do you see as the kind of the, the, the big challenge for you know, more mainstream adoption? Uh, you know, I, I know we talked about kind of the consumption model from your standpoint, but just kind of step back without the, the blue box hat on. You know, what do we need to do as a community in OpenStack? Yeah, you know, I, I was reading an interesting article earlier today uh, that was on the same topic, and they're basically saying, look, this cattle versus pets argument is interesting, and yes, everybody thinks uh, that the cattle should be the appropriate methodology, but the reality is the enterprise has a ton of pets, they will have a ton of pets, and they will, uh, those aren't going away. I think you look at the TD Bank presentation, I think it was yesterday morning, they said, look, we're trying to get our workloads moved to cloud, we've got 20% move now, we're trying to get to 80% in the next five years, like, we're so, so early in this transformation. Uh, and so to just say, hey, put all your greenfield things here, like, yeah, that's interesting, and yes, new things will end up on OpenStack. They also could end up on Amazon or Google or Azure. Um, but we have an opportunity to actually pay attention to what the, the enterprise is saying. Like, look, we've got these things that are stuck. We want to move them. How do we do that? And so that's where I think like the Win the Enterprise working group uh, that the board created, those types of initiatives and projects are so vital. Uh, and I think we can see a lot of success out of that long term. So the, um, on, in the news today, Gartner analysts are saying that, you know, OpenStack's great for private clouds, but it, if you're doing private clouds, it's a, it's a, it's a science, science experiment. project that was on the, on the register. Uh, he does acknowledge that, you know, it's great for infrastructure. He's really talking about the management piece of it, kind of when you deep, deep, deep below the headline. Um, what do you take on all this? I mean, obviously, the, the mainstream <laughs> is saying we want more OpenStack, there's demand there. Um, where are the science projects? Where are the real deals? What are you seeing? Could you share just your experience and insight into where the action is and where the science projects are? Because yeah, I, there I, are legitimate science projects. There's oh, things absolutely. out there. I mean, any new technology is full of science projects. I, I legitimately don't understand Gartner's position on OpenStack, and they've, for a very long time, uh, for, for a long time presented it didn't exist, then pretended it didn't work, and now that it works, they're pretending it's a science project. And it's really, it's frustrating. Like, I, I laugh when the Gartner sales rep calls our office and say, look, your analysts don't, they don't acknowledge the product I sell is actually a product, so how am I going to buy your analyst services? You look at every other analyst in the industry, and, and, and they all say phenomenal things about OpenStack. They're able to track the progress. Lauren yeah. Nelson from Forrester did a great report uh, that said OpenStack is ready this week. It came out, uh, I think, on Monday. Uh, for whatever reason, Gartner has like a personal vendetta against OpenStack. Uh, and I, I get it. That it's might not shift now that the big whales are in the market, Oracle, IBM, I mean, yeah, those guys, they, they, they do a million. for a while. Like, I think yeah. the, the challenge is Gartner is so focused on this public cloud story, right? The Magic Quadrant gets released last night or today, this morning, uh, and it's all about Amazon, Azure, and Google, and those are all fa they're fascinating technologies. They're moving very quickly. They don't involve OpenStack. They're an important piece of everything that's going on. Uh, but that doesn't invalidate everything that this entire community is doing, and I think they, they struggle on that fact. So I, I, it's a really, it's a head scratcher for me. I don't understand the positioning. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's lack of understanding in the actual market. I mean, enterprise is kind of like a nuanced business, and this is everywhere. It's like, a, I mean, OpenStack spreads. If you look at OpenStack, what it does, I mean, it spreads across I mean, a lot at, of enterprise touch points, so it's hard to put morning. it in a box. Look at the keynotes this morning. I mean, you had hundreds of thousands of cores of compute, uh, discussed from, from company to company to company. You know, it, it, actually I think a very fascinating thing would be for the foundation to put together a count of total number of hypervisors or total number of cores running, yeah. operating under OpenStack, whether it be public or private. I guarantee you that number is much, much larger than anybody recognizes. Oh. Uh, well, Jesse, it's very clear, we know what's going on at OpenStack. I'll tell you right now, we see it. You're talking about a new architecture around services, resource management, it's not just the layers and boxes, putting things into quadrants, whatever the they do, Gardner and others. But the fact of the matter is, it's an, it's an absolutely disruptive marketplace. And the enterprise is now settling into almost vertical sectors, but you can't put people into boxes. So OpenStack is confusing to most people because you can't put it in a box. Right, because you it's can't. not a product, it's a project. Like, I think we get and stuck it, on that as well. And it touches every aspect, so if you're an analyst, the work required to understand OpenStack would be, in their mind, horizontally scalable across you, every you sector. You almost need a, an analyst dedicated just to the project to be able to translate its capabilities, its technology developments to the rest of everything your analyst community is doing. Yeah, what do you think about the big tent and all this stuff going on? Um, we talked to some folks earlier about you know, this now is big tent is the new messaging around how they roll out and vis-a-vis -vis the old way, which kind of got its own name through just ongoing, you know, 
integrated, what they call evolutionary, whatever, I forget the term they call, but now it's all going under the big tent. What's your take on this release cycle? Yeah, you know, I think it, it's, uh, it's good to see progress and change there. At the end of the day, what the community is asking for, what the operators are asking for, they're looking for a stable platform. And whether you call that big tent or you call that integrated release or you call that uh, or use the tagging methodology. Like we just need to be able to define what works in OpenStack, what's new, uh, and and how that's progressing over time. I do like the idea that we're opening up the world to a lot more competitive projects. I think that's very helpful. I think for a long time you would have sort of a definitive OpenStack project. This would be the way to do things, and that might not be the best way to do things. Uh, and so the work that's happened over the last uh, six months and a year gives more competition, it makes it OpenStack more of a free market, uh, a free market software economy, which I think is, is phenomenal, but uh, it's, it's a great trajectory. Jesse, we're getting t t uh, tight on time here. Why don't I ask you the last question? What's up next for you guys? What's on the horizon? You know, shoot the arrow forward. Where do you guys want to be? What's the outlook from your standpoint in the industry? Yeah, great question. So the, the last six months have been really fun. We've sort of been lining up uh, partnership after partnership after partnership after partnership, and we're getting that they're all in different stages. We actually have five, five massive projects that we're undergoing all at once, and we sort of look at the calendar between now and Tokyo, we're realizing sort of every 45 days, we're going to have a really cool uh, piece of news. Um, so the next one, is, uh, it looks like it'll come out in early June, and we're, we're tuned up for that. All right, Jesse Prebin, CTO and founder of Blue Box Cloud. They got funding, they're burning cash, they're growing, they're hiring. <laughs> Every 45 they days, they got madness, news, they won the Cube yeah, Madness. indicator of Woo! big things going forward. <laughs> yeah, and congratulations and thanks for the trophy. We'll be right back. Cube Madness here live in, in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. And to shout out to Jeff Frick and Dave Vellante. Yeah, we, we, got, the, we got the hardware. <laughs> we'll be right back.